The goal in this video is to display the details for the comic book that was clicked on. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We'll do a couple of other things as well in this video. The first thing I want to do is to lay out that grid that will contain the details. So I'm going to take a moment here and do some formatting. So comic, uh, actually some commenting so that I can easily find what I'm looking for because things are starting to get a little bit hectic here. So here we'll have the, uh, yeah, this will be the uh, character detail. And then this would be the detail grid. All right, that should help a little bit. All right, so under comic details, we're gonna add another grid. We're gonna put this grid in the, in the third row. Remember, we created three rows. This is going the last one, and this is gonna And we'll just go ahead and set all of this All right, and inside of this grid, I'm going to uh, create pretty much like what we did last time, um, where we had for the character detail, we had the definitions for columns and rows. I'm just going to copy that exactly and reuse it here with uh, with uh, comics. And I see I've already made a mistake here. All right, and then inside of here, I'm going to create pretty much like what I did here. In fact, let me just go ahead and grab this, and I'm gonna paste it. And here, we're gonna go, instead of just detail image, this will be comic detail image. Instead of detail name, this will be comic detail name. And instead of detail description, it'll be comic detail description text block. It's easy enough. Alrighty, and now uh, what I want to do is uh, look at this list of comics. Currently, I didn't give the grid view a name before I created the item click. I'm going to give it a name now, and we're going to call this uh, comics grid view. And so this should be the comics grid view item click. And inside on the uh, main page.xaml.cs, let's rename this to Comics Grid View Item Click. So, in this, what we're going to do is essentially exactly what we did uh, here, where we grabbed off the item and then we started populating things, right? So, let's go ahead and just copy that code. Paste it here, and we're going to change everything up from character to comic. Comic book. Select comic. And the comic has a title, not a name. So we'll change that. Otherwise, everything will be just about correct. Let's make sure we're setting comic detail name and comic detail description. All right. Let's run it, see if it works. Okay, and eventually we got it to completely fill in. Awesome. We'll select Crimson Dynamo. Great. And I'm going to select one of the items like that comic. Now, let me... Okay, you can see 
that we do see the details, but I have to scroll. I have to basically resize the window so I can get to it. There's no scroll viewer. So let's change that. Let's go back to the main page as XAML, and I'm going to add a outermost grid, and inside of that, a scroll viewer. So here I'm going to go grid, and then scroll viewer like that and then I'm going to just grab everything that we previously done cut it and paste it in and the reason I'm doing it this way is because then the indentation will be right if we just try to wrap the grid and the scroll viewer around the existing code uh, it doesn't work as well and I've found in my unfortunate experiences All right, Fin Fang Foom, an interesting character. And let's choose one of the comics, and we can see, whoops, okay, now what do we have here? All right, in this case, the description is actually null. So maybe we need to do a check for that. And this is why you want to test and test and test and keep running the application, keep using it, because eventually you're going to find new and interesting problems with the application. The more you test it, the more stable it will be eventually. Okay, now I just discovered a bug, if you notice that. Previously, we had selected a comic and displayed it here. And then I selected a new character. The character changed, the comic books changed, but as you can see, without making a selection, all of the previous data is still here. So what we'll need to do is add a little bit of logic right here here where you click on a given new person. So uh, I don't know where we can put that. It doesn't really matter. Here, we'll put it right here. This is fine. So I want to remove the comic detail description, setting that to empty string, comic detail name text block dot text equals empty string and then we'll go uh, comic detail image and we'll set its source equal to uh, null. Let's see if that works. Just curious what happens while we're still loading this if I can click on that and I can. And that's the beauty of async. All right, so we've selected a comic from Giant Man. Now I'm going to change to a different character, and the and all the details about that comic go away, as well as the list of comics for the previous character for Giant Man. All right, perfect. The Goliath. All right, let's choose a comic. Beautiful. Okay, very good. But the last thing that I want to do is um, I'm considering doing something like this that we did earlier for the characters for comic books. I'm just not sure if it's if it's necessary. Uh, boy, it's a hard call. Where do we make that call in? Yeah, we make it right there. I guess it wouldn't hurt. Let's 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 do this. I'm gonna copy it more for a template than anything else. And um, what we'll do is grab this off. 
and put that there. And change that to comics. Let's move this guy over a little bit, move that guy over a little bit. And we'll remove that. So this should ensure that we get 10 comics if those, if they exist. Now, if they don't exist, hmm. See, this is where things get a little bit tricky. See, I know in this case that there are 1,500 characters. What I don't know is that if every single character has at least 10 comic books associated with it, they may have zero. But there'd be no way to really figure that out uh, without passing back some piece of information like a count. So I'm going to backtrack away from this idea. You can experiment with this if you like. But the danger is that you would wind up making an unlimited number of calls, returning back the same you know, count of one or two comics, and you wouldn't want to do that. You would use up all thousand of your requests uh, in about 10 seconds. So we're going to go back, but I'll leave that code commented out so that you can maybe think about some alternative strategies that, that allow you to filter out the exceptions and make sure that an exception didn't happen. Maybe that's all we need to do here, actually. Ah. We'll just do this. Okay, we'll leave it at that. All right, so that's all that I wanted to do in this lesson. I'm I'm pretty happy with where things are at. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add an adaptive layout so that we can resize and things look good. So we'll do that in the next video. See you there. Thanks.